Hi guys, I'm Mark Rodriguez. And I'm Johnny Rodriguez, and you're watching the Video Game Masters. And today we're going to talk about X-Men for the Sega Genesis. Oh no. Well, what's wrong? Game sucks. Why? Well, when it was first advertised way back then, it looked like some badass beat-em-up. You know, like the old arcade game from Konami. Not the side-scroller puzzle crap. Well, I'm sure the fans want to know more about the game. Who's going to give a crap for us to waste an entire episode reviewing that piece of shit of a game? I'd like to know more about the game. What? The fans have spoken. What fans? There's only one person. Bring on the purple bar. Actually, I could care less about the game. But it's fun to piss off Johnny. Magneto creates a deadly computer virus which he beams all the way from his base on Asteroid M to the Danger Room in the X-Mansion. Now the X-Men are trapped inside deadly realistic simulations based on their past adventures. This game lets you choose from four X-Men. First we have Cyclops. His real name is Scott Summers and his mutant power is firing off optic blasts. The game lets him fire these off in several directions as well as when he's jumping or crouching. Then we have Gambit, real name Remy LeBeau, who can charge up anything to explode but prefers to use playing cards. The game lets him fire off several cards at once that circle around him and sometimes home in on the enemies. His staff also gives them good range. Then there's Nightcrawler, real name Kurt Wagner, who is very useful thanks to his teleports. Not only can this help him take out the bad guys, he can also warp through walls to make some of the mazes easier to get through. Finally, there's Wolverine, also known as Logan or James Howlett, whichever you prefer. The game considers his animanium claws to be his mutant power. They not only give him a longer range of attack, but also give him a lunging slash and a spin slash move. When he uses claws when the mutant power bar is empty, he goes into his berserker rage mode. Since you can't control him at all when he's doing this, it ends up hurting you rather than helping you. Plus, this game actually remembers that Wolverine's true mutant power is his healing factor. If you can find a safe spot with Wolverine where he won't get hurt, his life meter refills completely. If you have the patience to wait that long, that is. You know, Transformers 2 was full of plot holes. Hey, we paid good money to see giant robots beat the crap out of each other, and we got to see giant robots beat the crap out of each other. Plus, Megan Fox has a sweet ass. Oh, damn right she does. You also get five backup X-Men. And they are Jean Grey, Storm, Archangel, Rogue, and Iceman. You don't really call Jean Grey. She automatically levitates you to safety if you fall off a ledge. Storm flies in to release a, well, a storm to attack all the enemies on screen. Rogue flies in to deliver a powerful punch to the bad guys. Archangel swoops by three times, firing his metallic razor sharp feathers at the enemy. Finally, Iceman makes an ice ledge for the characters to get past long gaps. You go through six stages as you try to beat Magneto. You start off in the Savage Land, where you travel through jungles facing off against, well, savages, and a whole bunch of traps. Here you fight against a juggernaut, bitch, and later on, Saladane. The second stage is the Shi'ar Empire, where you face heavily armed Imperial Guards and work your way through all the doors. The boss of this stage is Deathbird. The third stage is Excalibur's Lighthouse, where you face these weird orbs that are actually ghostly copies of the X-Men. The orbs can't be hurt, so you must find these special glasses to help you see them so you can be able to attack them. In this stage you face Sabretooth, but also the Juggernaut again, bitch, and Apocalypse. The fourth stage is Ahab's Future World. You'll have to avoid guns, weird monsters, and sentinels before you take on Ahab himself. 
The fifth stage is Mojo's Crunch, and it gets a lot harder because this time, you have a time limit working against you. You gotta survive exploding TV sets, pillars of fire, and all kinds of weird monsters. The boss is, of course, Mojo himself. And the final stage is Asteroid M, where you face even more traps and the Master of Magnetism himself. After each stage, you return to the Danger Room, where you can change X-Men or break these flying orbs to refill your life and mutant power bars before going to the next stage. The game's graphics are pretty cool. All the characters in the backgrounds look great. The music ranges from totally rocking to just there, and the sound effects are just random video game noises. The boss fights should have had their own separate theme, and the X-Men could have had a couple of voices to make the game even better. This game is pretty tough. Even if you choose amateur level, it only lets you go through the first three stages, so you gotta be pretty tough to see the rest of the game. You might be able to spam Nightcrawler's teleport to make things easier, but still no cakewalk. The real hard part is that you only have one go at this. That's right, each X-Men has only one life and there are no continues, so when all four of them die, the game is over. The game also has two player action, but that just makes things worse since the same rules apply. If both of you die, well, there goes half your team right there. Plus, with all the jumps and traps this game has, both players better be perfectly in sync for this. If you're gonna do it that way, then why even bother making it two player? One of the weirdest things about this game is when you fight Mojo at the end of stage 5. After defeating Mojo, an image of Professor Xavier appears telling you that the only way to defeat the virus is to reset the computer. Now you're just stuck there wondering what to do, but check this out. The only way to reset the computer is to actually reset your Genesis system. I mean, what the hell man? With how hard this game is to make it all the way to Mojo and to actually defeat him, I mean, do you really want to risk to reset your system and start all over again? I mean, why even do that? This game sucks, that's why. Honey. And this game also suffers from a serious lack of Asuka. Torment Sparks was the last episode. What the hell does Asuka have to do with anything? Hey, everything's better with Asuka. Oh, God. Well, anyways, guys, I do admit that the Genesis version of the X-Men game is a whole lot better than those crappy Nintendo X-Men games from back in the day, but it's still far from being a masterpiece. The difficulty is pretty high, so if you think you can take the challenge, check it out. And that's the end of today's episode of the Video Game Masters. I'm Mark Rodriguez. I'm Jenny Rodriguez. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Wasting my time with X-Men, huh?